Larry Doby became the first colored player signed by the American League when he joined Cleveland in 1948. He became an immediate star with his home run slugging and sensational play in center field. And the 1948 World Series is all over. Cleveland Indians win a 4-3 triumph over the Boston Braves. Outfielder Larry Doby was Cleveland's top hitter among the regulars in the series. And Larry Doby is hitting so sensationally that some believe he can hit 400 this year. Larry Doby of Cleveland smashes one through the middle and watch this fleet put an outfielder go. Fine defensive catch by Larry Doby. Larry Doby, the American League's top home run hitter for 1954. White Sox manager Larry Doby. Times have changed since the days when Doby was the only black in the American League. You're proud and happy that you've been a part of integrating baseball to show people that we can live together, we can work together, and we can be successful together. I think he was fine in his place in history. He knows that because of his efforts that many were able to come after him and boys were able to dream because of what he did. His was a Hall of Fame career that began with the Newark Eagles in 1942. Yeah, Hall of Famer Larry Doby. And when that statue was unveiled in Cleveland, Larry Doby Jr., our guest, was there to uh, pull the drape. Good to see you. Good morning to you. Good morning. Gentlemen. How cool was that, man? It was it was really cool because you never think that something like that's going to happen. And my father was very understated and very humble. So when people see fit to honor him like that, unfortunately, he wasn't here. But, you know, it, it kind of, uh, you know, makes you have a really good feeling in your heart. Well, of all the honors bestowed upon your dad, a uh, big one coming up tomorrow. We appreciate you having you here because you're headed to D.C., for the ceremony that presents your father with the Congressional Gold Medal. Yes, sir. Um, tell us about that honor and how that came about. Well, uh, Congressman Bill Pascrell from Patterson was instrumental in getting the medal bill passed on the floor of the representatives. Uh, there was a guy from Ohio, a guy from South Carolina also, who were instrumental, and then it goes to the Senate. They vote on it. Cory Booker was instrumental in that. Because your dad, he was born in South Carolina. Born in South Carolina. Raised here in Jersey. Raised in Jersey. Okay. Played in, in Ohio. So those three there states yeah. kind of came together. And it's, you know, one of the fewer times that he's being honored for, you know, his impact off the field. So it's, that's pretty cool because there's a lot of good athletes, but good men, then that number dwindles mm -hmm. down even more. Mm -hmm. So... Very proud of him. Yeah, no, I, I got a chance. My first All-Star game, he was an honorary captain for the American League, so I got a chance to, to meet your dad. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, to follow Jackie Robinson and, and be kind of overlooked with his, mm -hmm. the things he went through, mm -hmm. uh, it was really cool to meet him and get a chance to see him. You know, Jackie died at an early age, and your father passed away early as well, but we attribute a lot of that to the pressure that Jackie went through. Yeah. When you look at it now and you see what your father went through, what, what do you think? That may well, cause him to pass away I mean, at an age. Yeah, I'm sure that has something to do with it because whenever you have something that's bothering you and you have to keep it inside, you can't let it out. I'm sure it's not healthy for the body. And, you know, those two men had to endure things that nobody else had to endure at that particular time. Everybody is used to going into a ballpark and being rooted against because of the, the number on their jersey or the logo, but they were getting rooted against because of the color of their skin. So yeah. it was a lot different than anybody else had to deal with. And you're an athlete yourself. You played some minor league baseball. Uh, did you get a chance to work out with your dad and stuff like that? Yeah, you? you know, when he coached, I got a chance to, uh, you know, work out with the team. So Montreal, he started with, and Cleveland for a year, and then the White Sox. And those memories are indelible. Well, you, and you, when your dad managed the White Sox, that uni that they had everybody wearing, <laughs> boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. But what were, what were your first memories of being around your dad as a baseball player? Obviously, you know, you know he's your dad, but right. at what point did you become aware of what he did and how significant he was? Well, you become aware of it very young, but the significance does not hit you until you get older and you can understand what he had to go through because obviously – all of us here could stay at any hotels, could eat at any restaurant, could drink from any water fountain. That was the law when he was playing, that they couldn't do that. So it's foreign and it's, it's almost unbelievable to me that that was the way things used to be. Mm -hmm. So yes, as you get older and then you realize what he had to go through and how things are today, then you become very proud that because of, you know, him opening the door, people were able to come after him. Mm -hmm. You know, living in Montclair, New Jersey, uh, the first thing I heard when we moved there, 
Yogi Berra lives here. Yes, sir. And then as uh, time goes on, I get to know the area. Mm -hmm. I hear about Lo Larry Dolby being in Patterson, but his family growing up, he moved to Montclair. Yeah. Yes. And so that was his area. Did they spend time? Did they, they were friends, Hal, from, as we would say, from jump. Wow. When my father broke into the big leagues, Barra was one of the first people that was nice to him. There were a lot of people who didn't want him there. It's understandable to a degree because they were taking jobs away. But, you know, what's baseball? The best player is supposed to play. And Yogi was like that from day one. And I appreciated his friendship, grew up with, his, with Dale and know Larry and Timmy pretty well now. And, you know, it was, it was funny because my father was humble and understated to start with. And in Patterson, he was the big fish. Right. You know, then he moves to Montclair, and the most famous baseball player basically lives there. So it's like, <laughs> you're from Montclair, do you know Yogi? Hey. You know, like, they don't even know who he is. And then, you know, also, ironically, Buzz Aldrin, who was the second man on the moon. Right. Everybody knows Neil Armstrong was number one, but Buzz Aldrin was from Montclair also. Yeah. You know, so it was like... It just, middle schools, Buzz Aldrin, middle school. Ah, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, so, just yeah. a confluence of things that kind of, you know, came together, which made us always keep our mouths shut when they asked, you know, what did your father do? Yeah. We were proud, but, you know, he taught us, like, people aren't going to know and don't get mad at them and you know what goes on in this house, and that's just kind of the way we were. When, when, when you sit back, I'm sorry, Matt, okay. when, you, when you sit back and you think back to your relationship with your dad, what do you miss the most? I just miss talking to him. You yeah. Know? I mean, he, he just had a perspective and, you know, an attitude that, you know, I didn't see things a lot of times. I'll give a really quick example. He played for the Newark Eagles in the um, Negro Leagues. They shared the same field that the Newark Bears, which were the Yankees farm team, AAA. So when the Yankees team was out, the Eagles played. So fast forward years later, Rick Cerrone, a New Jersey guy, buys, is one of the part of the ownership group that buys mm. the team. He calls me up and he wants to name the stadium after my dad or something like that. So I know Cerrone pretty good. I go to my father. I said, you know, Dad, they want to do this. I think it's really nice. You know, it'll bring recognition to you. Da 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 da. You know, can you do it? You know, he's like reading the paper and he goes, No. <laughs> I'm like, What do you mean, no? I said, This guy's a good guy. And, you know, he sits for a few minutes and he goes, Larry, if I let them name that stadium, Nork Bear Stadium, after me, I'm disrespecting all the guys that I played with for the Eagles. You know, and I didn't even think about that. And then fast forward, it's called Nork Bears Eagle Stadium. So wow. he always knew a whole lot more than me and had, you know, good reasons for what he did. I wasn't allowed to question him, but, you know, when he explained him, then I said, oh, okay, I understand. Wow. 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 Uh, last thing, and then we've got to let you go, the, the congressional gold medal. What's that mean to, to you and the family? Well, I think uh, my sisters are always happy whenever he's recognized, you know, I try to carry on a legacy and think what would he, how would he react to it? So I think the fact that this is saying that he had an impact off the field and, you know, that maybe he was a pretty good guy, apart from his athletic prowess, it, it's kind of special and not a lot of people are given this honor. And, of course, Buzz Aldrin has one. Yogi Berra has the Presidential Medal of Freedom, so Montclair is representing pretty well. Wow, Larry, we appreciate stuff. you being here with us. Congratulations stuff. to you and your family on the posthumous honor for your dad. Really a nice thing, and I'm sure we'll have some follow-up images we'll put on the program tomorrow, 3 p.m. Uh, in D.C. Larry Doby, Jr., thanks for being here with thanks us. Thanks for having me.